The Tangent Egg Podcast is aimed at a mature audience. It contains themes that are not appropriate for all listeners. It's important to note that we are not experts. We routinely have no idea what we're talking about and are just three idiots sitting around a table. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Tangentic Podcast. I'm Seth, and as always with me are Swoosh and Jondo. Hi. Hello. I just realized saying that intro right now, we've, we're well over 100 episodes, and it's not always, because there's plenty of episodes that are easy to find. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't an have an I, I also realized... I've just been saying that intro for so long, <laughs> and I just keep doing it's it. It's muscle memory. But I also realized it depends on which one of us says something first, but if I say, uh, depending on how I say hi, Dan goes the opposite way. We just keep <laughs> swapping highs. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I don't know why I brought that up. It was just suddenly something that popped into my head. It's just like, that's not true. Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> it's almost I like it was a tangent and we're known for these things. Before we even started. <laughs> that is a oh, no, record. We haven't even done topic one. <laughs> like, we tangented off the freaking intro. <laughs> that's a first. We haven't done that before. The squirrels are hyped today. <laughs> well, this we're, might be a bit of a... We're going to need the squirrels episode. today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Microsoft has decided to reveal its pricing plan for if you want to have support, continued support beyond 2025 for Windows 10. Hmm. And uh, it's not great. I mean, corporations might be able to eat it, but it's pretty shite even then. Yeah. So, per machine, you pay $61, and it doubles every year for the following three years. That, That's some money grubbing. Like, yeah. That's per machine. That's almost as bad as the old 3DS Max like things we had to deal with. Fuck. Because, like, the individual <coughs> consumer is not going to be able to pay that. Yeah. They're just going to upgrade to Windows 11. So I'm wondering, because, I wonder, is it like, double, like, from the, the 61? Or is it, uh, what, like, 61, then, doubles one, every then 122? Year. And then, like, 244? Like, oh, god fucking oh, dance. Sounds like that. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm assuming it's going to be. Because they want to force them onto their new version. We all know that. Yeah. They want people on 11 and they want them on now. I mean, like, home consumers, I I think that given this, they must have softened on it. Mm. But I remember <laughs> reading for a point that there was, like, a date where you were going to get 11. Yeah. You weren't going to get a choice. They did that yeah. with 10 as well, didn't they? But 10 was meant to be the last so. OS. Like, it was meant to yeah. be a continued support beyond that point for just infinitum. But, like, and then, eventually they'd have to do a new one because yeah. such is life. But it came around a lot fucking quicker than they said it was gonna. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. And they even said like, I mean, with uh, from Windows Seven to Windows Ten, they said, "Oh, we're gonna support the the last operating system for like ten plus years." That doesn't feel like, ten plus years. Yeah, like I. When did Windows Ten come out? That's a good question. Like I, I don't like Windows like, like much, but I don't have the know how to use Linux, so I'm like, eh. Uh, I've got most of that know-how and <clears throat> yeah it's it's rough gaming is getting so it, yeah. the thing is gaming is so painfully close to being good on Linux yeah it's almost there I keep watching it I've even actually like I often not often but I somewhat regularly actually reinstall my copy of Windows yeah get rid of all that weird bloat that creeps in while you're doing other things yeah mine's duo I like having that nice fresh install it's very nice and I have a couple of times when I've gone to do that been like, no, I'm going to install Linux mm. and I'm going to try Linux again. And I can do most of the stuff you need to do <clears throat> for a desktop, for a Windows user in Linux. It's very easy. Yeah. One sticking point is games. Yeah. Yeah. Just not quite there yet. They are so close. Which is yeah, so close to cracking more that infuriating, note. to be honest. It's like, it's almost there, guys. Just that little push and you'll have it. I mean, places like Steam with all of their uh, Proton layer stuff is helping. Yeah. Other software things are taking the same torch and working on it for other stuff that isn't part of the Valve ecosystem. There's just a big push for it. And I guarantee you, 100%, if they get a day where Linux can go, we run every one of your games at the gate day one, yeah. I will never use Windows again. No, that's fair. Honestly, I'm not surprised Steam's backing that because, to be honest, like there's looking at like Linux going, "Hey, look, a market. Let's tap into that." Well, also, 
Valve has transitioned more from a... They've actually said this in some interviews. They don't want to make products unless mm. they can actually push something. Yeah. So a lot of why we didn't get... Like, everyone been like, where's Half-Life 3? And then Half-Life Alex came out on VR. Yeah. Because Valve was really excited about VR and thought they could really push the space and make something really creative in that. And they did. Same with Proton. They wanted to push gaming to more people and give people choice. Mm. Mm. And they also, of course, wanted to use Linux as part of their <coughs> Steam box slash Steam Deck. Yeah. So, of course, it's behooven <laughs> to them to maximize compatibility. Yeah. So, you kind of run into this position where Valve really only cares about advancement. And that's cool, and that means they do niche stuff, like help Linux. Yeah. yeah. It works out well. Most of the time. Uh, I've, I've thought about going Linux so many times. Like, right, I'll learn it, I'll do this, but I already know enough about this. I, <laughs> yeah. I was feel like, I'm too old to learn a new thing, even though I'm yeah. forcing myself to learn new things now, which is interesting. But uh, if... Microsoft does what they say in the dome. They uh, aren't actually lying about that 10 years. Because it came out in 2015. Oh, wow, Holy really? shit. God, we're all. So if they do support out, they do... Like, because this payment... Getting back to the original fucking topic. The payment plan system that they're talking <coughs> about comes into effect after 2025. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes some sense, actually. But at the same time... Yeah. That original marketing span of 10 years of support is technically true. Yeah, when did 20, I don't even know what... When did uh, Windows 11 drop? Ah, uh, that was a uh, couple of years back now. So we've only got a, a few more years of support of that. Because <laughs> it, it, it came with my machine, so... I, uh, I upgraded see. to 11 from 10. And I upgraded to 10 from 7. Mm. 2021, 11 came out. Yeah. Alright. I'm sort of cheering. Like, I haven't had to buy an OS in quite a while. Like, yeah. Well, I generally just keep stepping up through the Microsoft upgrade. Yeah, that's exactly what I, I did. Like, I tend to wait until it's at least three updates in and then I convert. Oh, major service pack and then just like, yeah. okay, now it's worth trying. Yeah. Once it's no longer on fire or crashing itself. Yeah. Yeah, I had problems at work when they forced us to switch over to 11. And it's like, hey, half the software doesn't work. <laughs> Man, I, I have seen so many legal firms because I have to deal with that kind of industry a lot. And they still whine about having to be switched off XP. Oh, I bet they do. Like, every single was like, fuck, we loved XP. Like, I, I'm there with you. It was a great operating system. Nah, nah. Cause, cause you, used... you didn't love XP. You loved nine, you know, 15 year old my old. No, nah, yeah. fucking you, you, you loved the old software that didn't have to connect online, that didn't have a DRM that just worked yeah. when you installed it. Something that wasn't just spying on me to feed back to the corporation at work. That well. didn't require a cloud to run. God, I hate the cloud. Fucking oath. <laughs> <laughs> so much potential so much evil I always find it yeah. funny anytime my old man would be like what is the cloud like shit that's what it is I can tell you exactly what the cloud is it's someone else's computer yeah yeah uh, means you lose control yeah god I hate the cloud <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Can you tell we all love this OS? <laughs> At some point, we do need to change the name to Three Crotchety Old Men. But I know. <coughs> that can be the, yeah, that can like, be the food podcast. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. The first fucking Windows I ever used, and I know, like, surely someone's going to pipe up and say they used an older one, but I was on a 486 computer running three point, Windows 3.1. Yeah. Like, the earliest but, I remember was, like, 98 or something, <laughs> but that's the one that just... I remember the actual thing for it. I just remember because I had a 486 and it ran Windows 3.1 and I needed to know that information to make sure I got things that would work on it. The only thing I remember my first computer is it came with a game that was a Mario one that was basically where in the world is Carmen San Diego but Mario. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I really remember fun. that game. I liked that game. You play as Luigi trying to find Mario. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think my first, the first game I remember, I had two games. I only had two games on my first computer, and it was the PC version of The Lion King and the PC version of Aladdin. They were good fucking games, too. 
Oh, that's absolutely rock solid <clears throat> old school platform. They re released on the Switch a few years back. I picked them up near instantly. Good games, mm -hmm. really. Mine were like Commander Keen and oh, the original okay. Wolfenstein. Yeah, yeah. Show on our age. I wasn't yeah. allowed to have those when I was. They came that pre installed young, on our PC. Well, mine was a hand me down, so oh, yeah. of course Dad would have wiped anything that it came with. Yeah. But. I did eventually get them because my dad got me that we were in a one of the, a swap meet, mm. and it was a C. This was a few years later when we when CDs were becoming big. Yeah. And he got this pack that was ninety nine games on one disc. Oh. And back then I thought, oh, this is amazing, some kind of like cover disc type shit. Yeah. No, 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 no. This was a CD that some weirdo had just ripped ninety nine games to. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> I didn't know that at the time. I thought it was a real product, and it was not until like many, many years later when I was thinking back Ooh. on it and go, "Oh shit, that's some bootleg crap my dad just randomly bought me." I love it. Perfect. I'm, but that's when I finally got to play Wolfenstein and Commander Keen and stuff like that. Nice. I remember an old game that I can never remember the fucking name of, and I've tried so long to find it. And it was a uh, an old. It's like a two D top down, and it was almost like the. Uh, the shmups we play now a little like Vampire Survivor but you play it as a mm. llama that had a rocket pack on the back of it and you pretty much just had to oh. run and survive for as long as you could it's a little orange pixelated llama and just critters came at you from everywhere you pretty much had to run and kite them and try and survive as long as you can and for the well, life of me I can't remember the fucking name of it and I've tried so I'm just long. glad someone else remembers that I thought I imagined that I've tried for so long to find it I, can I can't remember the name I know you played as a llama Oh, that's I remember I like the llama with the rocket launcher thing. I was like, "Dad, yeah, no! If you ever find that, let me know." <laughs> I will. Maybe someone on in our community will hit it up on Facebook for us, please, or the Discord. Come I mean, join us I, on Discord. I, Tell us about a game. Absolutely love when you find those sort of games, and then it's like, "Oh my god, they're real!" Yeah, they weren't a fever dream. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was a fever dream, man. Like, what the fuck? That that existed? Like, holy shit! Oh. oh man! But I mean, like, I grew up in the era of, of shareware, where you could get like discettes of like the first oh, yeah. half of games yeah. at like fucking Kmart uh, for like two bucks yeah. next to the register. My mom used to placate me so hard with that shit. Yeah. Did your schools always seem to have Lero installed on them somewhere? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I don't know Some where that game came always from. had that game, and it would just spread like a fucking I virus. I swear, that game came from the ether. It was never built or sold. It just appeared places. Like, yes. It, if your that, system, that's how we found yeah, it. Yeah, if your system sat long enough, eventually Lyra was on it. That's how it worked. Yeah. Oh, the, uh, I can't remember the encyclopedia. There was a game on that where you, like, had to find your way through the, uh, through the halls of a fucking library. I can never remember the name of it. That sounds very familiar. So you weren't just watching the screen No, no, no. It was like um, <laughs> it was like some this... software you installed on your computer that was like every yeah. year they came out with a new update and it was just like yeah. an encyclopedia of shit you could look through. Mm. Um, yeah. But in that you could go to like the, the library and there was like a hidden button you could press and you were literally walking the halls of a, li of a, a library and it was like oh, a maze cool. you had to find your that's way out really of. Cool. Yeah. And like as you go through there, like you walk, oh, what's this book? You pull it off the shelf. It's just a random article from the disc. <clears throat> it was really fucking cool. I spent a lot That's of time nice. doing that. But yeah, just one of the random things you think of. Mm. Although, like, I've I've never actually seen it anywhere else but at a school. Yeah. Is that, do you either of you remember the game Zumbinis? That Ooh. sounds familiar. I know. You probably saw it at a school. Yeah. I've never seen it on any normal person's computer. I what is it? Like it sounds it's in my head. Like I know I've either heard it or seen it somewhere. But once you see him, I'll, I'll see if I can get it. Honestly, I'm half tempted to type in Lero into Steam and see if anything pops up. <clears throat> Holy crap, I think it got a Steam release. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. It did. It absolutely got a Steam release. Holy shit. How much is it? <laughs> Uh, it's 15 bucks. That's not bad. Um, uh, it, if, if you look that up on Steam, you'll get it. Um, yeah, I have never seen this game anywhere. This is the first time I've seen this not in a school setting, mm. ever. I've never seen this game anywhere else. 
Oh, yes. I remember this game. Yeah, oh. this was like the, the really big reward game where it's like, oh, you've been really good in class. Yeah. You can go play Zumbinis. Every, like, primary school has this pre-installed, I swear. Yeah. yeah. I must it always be reminds too me old of because this is way too new for me. Like, every game in, at my school was, like, DOS. You had, to you had to type your way through DOS to find the fucking games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I remember that. Specifically, I remember the weird little green thing on the logo they have with the tank treads. Yeah. That thing. That's That was seen in my memory. Yeah. Again, another thing I thought might have been a fever dream. I... I Look, I've asked way too many people about that game and gotten positive answers to yeah. think it was a, a dream, but no one has ever played it outside of a school. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, Apparently yeah. on... I've asked pretty much everyone I know about Zumbinis because it's always one of those funs where drunk, hey man, what did you play in high school when you got access to the computer? Yeah. And a lot of answers would be something from stickdeath.com. Oh, I miss Stick Death. And Carter like, 95 it, was the encyclopedia game. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> it, it had like a, a library dungeon thing in it and you had to find articles in things and answer questions to progress through. That's I knew cool. I wasn't dreaming. It, I, it existed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, if if I was looking for, like, a game that I, I've, ne I've never been able to find it again, I would have to go through an abandoned website and, like, check every fucking oh, yeah. title. Because I have no idea what this game was. All I remember is I picked it up as a kid because the way my parents used to bribe me to do good at school was buy me video games. <laughs> uh, kind of worked now. Yeah. Um, it, it, you played some dude. It was a side-scroller. And he played this dude, and he had a helmet on, and I think a loincloth, and that was it. It was very odd. And he could shoot these, like, weird square bullets, and he could turn into a dragon. And I have no idea what the fuck this game was back when I was a kid. Like, it's just lodged in my memory as some thing I owned at some point. Yeah. But I have no idea what the game was, so it's an eternal, like, <laughs> earworm brain itch. And it always happens. Occasionally, they just come back into, like, out of nowhere. It's like, remember this game? Like... Yes. Like, why am I thinking of this? How dare you remind me of this? Uh, okay. Charles Jackrabbit. Oh, yeah. Damn Jazz I still Jackrabbit. have the entire diskette set to, for Jazz Jackrabbit. Yeah, nice. It's like one of the things I've always wanted to do, although he doesn't actually do conventions anymore, would have been to actually go to Cliff Blazinski with all these fucking dude bros there trying to get their fucking copy of gears side yeah. and I'm like here sign my original box set diskette copy of Jazz Jack <laughs> uh, you know he would go insane for that be great I've always wanted to do that but I've never had the opportunity uh, and now Cliff really doesn't do mm. tours anymore Yeah, so it's you know basically not going to happen but I mean hey if weird confections to the internet you hear about this Mr. Balinski but uh, yeah please, I'd <laughs> really like to get that box signed <laughs> please sign my shit <laughs> It's just cool artifacts. Yeah. And I have... Like, I still have the original box copy of Lemmings. Oh, like Lemmings was great. All-time goat of a game. Yeah. God, it was a dumb game, too. <laughs> so, uh... To bring it all back around, because we've just spent almost 20 minutes on so much... <laughs> <website. laughs> you did well on that one. <coughs> oh, man. Microsoft doesn't want me to remind you that they're gonna charge you for updates. Bastards. So... Next one, although this is probably like just as funny as stuff mm. because goddamn, this was the best. So Amazon had its uh, uh, stores that you could walk in to pick up all the any items you wanted off the shelf and just walk out. Yeah. And they told everyone it was being done with an AI program with the hundred cameras in the ceiling and about all the particular placements and weight sensors. But yeah, it turns out that seventy percent of that. Uh, was being done by a bunch of Indian guys. Yeah. <laughs> just Indian guys it, watching the monitors and just watching your shop. Pretty much. Apparently they needed people to verify whether or not the cameras were making the right calls. Mm. And it, yeah, out of something like a thousand uh, interactions, over 700 of them had to be manually reviewed. Jesus. That, that is a very dumb AI. Can you imagine, like, the, the application process? I want you to work for Amazon. They're like, fuck yeah, work for Amazon, sure. 
big company, good money. All right, I want, to, want you to work in the sales department. We're going to go through and we need to check every sale when you're doing it. Fuck yeah, I, I'll go through. It's a good desk job. And then you're sitting there watching video of other people shop. Honestly, yep. though, considering the weirdness that is America, where all this kind of shit was happening, you know that place is going to be worse than Walmart shopping. Like, the things people would have worn there. Those... those oh, yeah. Those poor Indian guys are probably scarred for life from what they've had to <laughs> I see. I mean, people walk out in the weirdest shit in places where you have to at least at, interact with someone who might run a cash register. Yeah. yeah. Imagine the kind of people who go into a store where it's like, no one! It is either complete insane people or a bunch of reclusive nerds. That That's the only people that would be going there. I, I would expect it sort of like a, like a 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. window. Yeah. Like, all the energy drinks just disappear. About 50 people in hoodies walk in and buy a lot of energy drinks and disappear within but seconds. The whole thing, like, doing from the start, I don't know what the requirements were to be able to walk through the door, whether you had to scan a card or an ID so or something. You'd, just you'd to... ping your phone on the way in, yeah. which would have your Amazon account on it, and then you would walk around the store, put everything in your basket, and then just leave. Yeah. Like... The idea was to tally I've everything. I've stolen a phone. Now phone. I'm going to walk in, like walk in here, fill up so many baskets, and just no, no. Walk. You have to have an active. You have to have an active Amazon account on the phone. I have to be signed in to be actually. able to 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 tag in. Hmm. Basically, there was an app uh, you had to go through. Yeah, I just think it's so much fucking theft. Like, oh, definitely. Just, you, oh, yeah. There's not even well, anyone. There's a reason they had to manually yeah. review 700 of them. I know, but like, not even scanning in. Just hop the turnstiles, walk in, take all of the shit and leave it's a it's a, it's a door it's not a turnstile it's yeah they, stop they, they can't there. even enter the store bit yeah. until you've bipped in it, it's I'm just not surprised they're shuttering that one well they're shuttering it because it wasn't real yeah, yeah. it was essentially although just, apparently yeah fake it till you make it, it it's how it works right apparently they were using the information they got from those you know 200 <clears> Indian guys thousand Indian guys I think it was they said in the article they did say that they were using the information they got from those guys so if they went through and went oh the thing thinks you got kale but he got lettuce okay they would then refilter that back into the AI to teach it the difference between kale and lettuce yeah I mean so they're basically just teaching it with their own internal resources as opposed to stealing them from people which is fine yeah um, yeah basically but that would mean like do so they're shuttering it so obviously this AI either went insane uh, from trying to figure out the difference between different kinds of vegetables or what happened because they should have a decent working AI if they've trained it with that information apparently it's not getting there and it'd also yeah. be difficult because people that want to take shit will hide shit like, yeah if you yeah. work out where the angles <clears throat> of the camera are just picked up an extra one well the idea was that I think they had like in those stores there was like a hundred cameras in the ceiling yeah. it was like almost impossible I say almost because I haven't been in one of the no. stores and couldn't say that it is yeah. the idea was to make it basically impossible for you to exist in the shop in a blind spot yeah and they always had like a way to see your face essentially unless you're wearing like big ass sunglasses and a hoodie I look I don't know enough about how the actual stores work they were never here in Australia it's only ever been in the States yeah there's probably a reason they never made it here we would have found the loopholes within seconds oh yeah oh the, the convict country yeah we'd find them. oh just imagine the, when the Bogans got a hold of that one just oh, yeah. oh, everything about yeah. it just screams steal from me yeah yeah although but we are it's the Amazon Bogans. they want to get everything done by a robot yeah Oh god! Yeah, the take their, all the money new, and pay no one for it. Yeah, their new warehouse robots are fucking weird. They're bipedal now, and they just hop around grabbing stuff. It's terrifying. What? I have not seen that. What are you talking about? It popped up. It's so the new ones that they're working on, kind of thing. But they're fucking weird. They got sticks for legs. <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up later. I'll have, see if I can find the original article. I had it somewhere because I think I sent it. Say, to is team. that the robot that just sort of shut itself down after working for like 28 hours straight? I think that is the one. <laughs> yeah. 
I prefer the police robot that first time they turned it on immediately drove itself into a fountain yeah. and killed itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, the ro- that's why we know the robots are so much smarter than us. So they're they like, what is your purpose? To police the people. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Can I pass butter? <laughs> Please make me a butter bot. <laughs> So, we've got a couple bits of gaming news to talk about. Uh, first one I'm gonna- I, I'm bringing up because I think it's one of- it, it ultimately all boils down to the kind of shit I hate about big- big companies. Yeah. So, I'm gonna tell you the whole story, and I'll tell you why I brought it up. EA was talk- uh, sorry. Get it all in the right order in my head, and I'll try again. <laughs> A, new, a gaming journalist is talking about how Motive, the studio that produced the Dead Space remake, had been uh, shuttered, well not shuttered, they'd been broken up a little bit and moved over to work on Battlefield, mm. despite having already done some work on a Dead Space 2 remake. Yeah. Now it has been confirmed by a number of other journalists, including the Everybody loves Sim Jason Schreier of Bloomberg. That, no, that's not what happened. EA was never working on a Dead Space 2 remake. They'd entertained the idea of making a Dead Space sequel, yeah. but couldn't get anything enough further along enough down the pipeline to actually be like, okay, we're going to just, we're going to commit to that. Mm. And then moved some of the staff over and eventually the whole studio to work on support for Battlefield. Now, the reason that EA said they did that and never ever entertained the idea of doing a Dead Space 2 remake was because the one didn't sell well enough. Which, but it sold so well. It outsold everything else in the month it was released. Yeah. It was the highest uh, sales release for that month and it released at the end of the month. Fucking, yeah, apparently not good enough. Fucking right. EA. And it was an excellent remake, by the way. If you've it never played really it, it was. It was great. Top tier. It's almost a different game. Yeah. But in a good way. Yeah. In all the ways you want that. A remake they, they, done properly. Yeah. But they basically yeah. took the soul of a very old person and put it into a younger body. Just yeah. New and vibrant. It definitely go. feels old story in a newer, more contemporary style. Yeah. Which just worked so well. It was really, really good. All that awesome. boils down for me is that... EA would do Dead Space 2 if they could do it on the cheap. If they could just take yeah. the old game, uh, get an AI to pass through a 4K texture pack, and then re-release it for 98 bucks. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah. No, they would take that in a second. They don't want as much effort that went into the remake of the first game to go into the remake of the second game. Well, they don't actually... Which is really annoying. They don't actually care about games. They, they no. care about money. Oh, no. That's they're how yeah. it works. No, they don't give a fuck at all. They just want the profit. Yeah. But, like, that annoys me that they were never planning to do it, despite how amazingly done and absolutely beautiful that remake was of the first one. Yeah. It would have sold gangbusters. Two is still considered the best Dead Space game. Yeah. It was really fun. So, a full stem to stand rebuild of that would have been amazing with some extra content mm-hmm. thrown in if they did, because they did that for the first one. Yeah. But the first one was actually kind of needing a redo anyway. It really doesn't work on modern machines very well. You've got to download a lot of additional software to get it to play ball. You basically have to force it to run, like, compatibility mode at this point. Yeah, and you've got to cap frame rates because they tied the physics to the frame rate. God, I love that. But <laughs> one was one was a joke on the back end. If you've never actually looked into the creation of Dead Space 1, the they, like, you think Gamebryo is sticking pieces together? Oh, no, nothing like the original Dead Space uh. engine. That thing ran on rubber bands and hope. And mostly on rubber bands. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like there. we... N- there wasn't a lot of hope there. <laughs> it's almost like we need a way to save old games. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, that's more of a software aging out problem yeah, than true. a death of the game. That's Still the have to take away your ability to play it. No, yeah. yet. Well, they'll find a way if they can. Oh, yeah. They can make them a dollar dollar. Oh, yeah. If there's money in it, they'll do it. So, uh, Overwatch is finally implementing proper and quite substantial bans 
for people who leave in the middle of an Overwatch match. I love that this is now, actually something people have been begging for for years. Yeah. And they're only doing it now in the game's death throes. I know. Like, the, it's heavily targeted at competitive play. Yeah. And the penalties you can suffer at pe under competitive it, are quite substantial. But, why? Like, competitive is basically dying, yeah. the owls are dead, so what's your progression path? Like, there's no... It, it's cool, nicely done, and I completely agree with what you're choosing to do here, but... It's just like, in-game brownie points at this point. Like it, without think, the owls being a thing, there's no point to it. I think there's there's a dev that's been working on this for a very long time, and yeah. it's just been in the background, just <clears throat> plugging away at it. Like, okay, how can I balance it? How can I get it to work? What can I do? And they've just left him in a back room. He's finally yep. got it fixed, and they're like, "Well, the game's dead." He's like, "Just fucking release it." <laughs> <laughs> Make uh, my so, time yeah. worth something. So just so you know, the way this is this is set out is you've got unranked and ranked. Mm. In unranked, it's based off the last twenty games you played. If you left one game, you get a warning. If you leave, if you leave two to three games, you get a five minute timeout. Four to five games, it's a twenty minute timeout. Six to nine games, it's a four hour timeout. But if you've left 10 or more games in your last 20 games, the 48 hour timeout. I'm okay with that. But that's just for casual. Yeah. In competitive, and again, this is based off your previous 20 games, one, you've left the game once, 15 minute timeout, two games, two hour timeout, three games, eight hour timeout, four games, 20 hours. If in the last 20 games you've left five competitive games, you don't get to play competitive for the rest of the season. <laughs> and if you leave 10 or more games across the whole season, you lose access to competitive for the whole season. I, honestly, the amount... Of, I, I used to play a lot of Overwatch 1. And I didn't play competitive because I really don't like competitive modes. But I would do the ranking at least, you know, every so often to for the new season that came out. And it was an epidemic at one point. Just people would log in like, Yeah! Good luck. Bad comp out. Yeah, pretty much. The bad comp I'm done. It's like, and we're all fucked now because the system doesn't care. Mm. Uh. Oh, now there's actually some pretty solid penalties. Yeah. But the worst ones are in the competitive side and the competitive side of Overwatch is just dying. Yeah. Like, it is a wasteland. Like, it was already but a wasteland. I like the fact that they're at least taking it seriously even if it is here at the end. Yeah. Some solid penalties. Maybe that's why they're okay with it, because they're like, oh, we're not going to hurt the player base. Yeah, that is true. There aren't enough people to really kick up a stink. It's been the first time in history where a patch hasn't been, like, responded to with screaming by someone in the community. Yeah. Except for the people that like uh, to drop out of games. Yeah, true. So, our last two ones are uh, to do with pricing on stuff. Yay. <laughs> first one is oh the good guys over at Call of Duty their newest cosmetic requires you to buy four packs of other cosmetics and if you buy all of them you get the new fancy thing all of that to buy about 80 bucks and, and what is this fancy thing it's a glove that you punch people with and has a fancy look at it emote and oh that's neat. it it's a glove from the new uh King Kong, King Kong movie. Ah, oh, yeah. The whole DLC's a cross promotion thing. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm guessing that went real well for them. I mean, it probably will. They don't, as far as I understand, they haven't pulled it. But the community's a bit like, seriously, what you fuck you doing? You seriously putting this one item, eighty dollars deep? Yeah. And it doesn't Honestly, even surprised. do anything, like. They had skins that made you almost invisible for cheaper. Yeah. Mm. At one point, their skins were basically just hacks. Yeah. So, I remember there was one that had such a good camouflage that people were legit not able to find people. Yeah. It was just a slightly off gray that blended in really well with the almost the fog that was, off, yeah, fog that was in the game. So, and they do this for a glove. Yeah. Yeah. 
that's just yeah. well they're, they're they're using the glove simply as a fomo point yeah and that's pretty much it like it's a dick move that deep but the, because when you do these sort of cross promotion things people will usually buy the pack that they think is cool yeah so they clearly try to leverage the idea that oh you think the glove is cool too yeah don't you mm, yeah. yeah well you're gonna buy so, all of them mm. look at this you wanna buy the rest it's fuck yeah fuck them so much honestly if the community actually pays this I will be angry because stop it guys That you there is a yeah. line you have to pick where the line is we don't want to keep pushing this one yeah and Call of Duty players much like FIFA players have basically decided there is no line yeah I honestly don't get that with the FIFA players. It is a thing that has happened oh, in other so games, strange. like oh, bringing yeah. back up uh, the Division Two. Uh, whenever mm. they do a, an apparel event, like a major apparel event drop, you can get so much of the of the apparel from playing the game. You can unlock packs. You can get a whole heap mm. of it. But there's usually at least one whole set that you have to spend real world dollars on, or several pieces of the other sets that you can only buy with premium currencies but if you do manage to collect all of the pieces by spending the cash and playing the game then you get the one piece of the advertised set that people actually want whether it's a cool yeah. headpiece or a cool yeah. jacket or something that's usually the piece that's locked behind everything else yeah mm. which always sucked it, yeah, yeah. It looked, I mean, we could go back to the original, like not the original, but the worst offender of it, um, Star Citizen, <laughs> where you have to have spent what ten grand in game or something, or two grand. Or it something? was something like you had to buy a thousand dollar ship pack yeah. before you would even see the big ship packs. Yeah, and then there was one you could only see the ship to buy it if you had already spent, I think, a eight to ten k or something. It it was some dumb number. Yeah, for fictitious ships in a game that hasn't even released yeah god that thing was a pyramid scheme somehow it's still got theoretically a product coming theoretically. they say the they say the road to 1.1 is on the horizon yeah yeah there's there might be something over the horizon just spend a few more dollars just keep just keep coming guys please we swear there's a game here <laughs> it's it just someone needs to just cut them off like you don't get to sell any more early access copies you don't get to sell any more ships you yeah, just have just the like, product yeah someone needs to put the junkie in rehab until it finishes the job yeah it, it's addicted to making ships that's all it is like no one's working on the back just end just skin stuff. packs and it's only it's only uh, like art to say here's the thing we might do buy it Look, if it ever gets to a point where the, the game is functional then hey they they will have a good thing, but I. They may as well just paying. make it a three D art book. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's sad. So, do we want to go bitch about a different company? Always. So uh, this time it's a uh, a good buddy's Ubisoft in the hot seat. Uh, Ubisoft doing we Ubisoft got... things. Yeah. So we recently got the pricing structure for how they're gonna sell Star Wars Outlaws. Game we've been tentatively excited for. Yeah. Now I'm marginally excited. The one Ubisoft excited. game that I've actually like thought, okay, that actually looks pretty cool. I sort of want to play that. I think they heard us. So yeah. they have three different versions of the game. As yeah. Ubisoft tend and to the do. standard edition. Yes. Well, at least there's only three instead of like six or some shit. Oh, yeah. God, they got insane with that for a while. I mean it's not as bad as uh what was it, Evolve, where it had a spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck, I forgot god about evolve uh so the standard edition of outlaws is the base game plus the castle runner bonus pack not sure what that is no idea it's probably just a, it skin, is pack. a skin pack that is a hundred dollars now in australia that's about what we expect to pack yeah it's very depressing it is a dystopian and game, a hellscape here for gamers pretty much next up you get the gold edition which has everything above plus three days early access and the season pass that that costs you a hundred and sixty dollars like God. early access is always fucking broken because it doesn't have the days like it doesn't have a day zero patch yeah and, and there's still fucking plenty of bugs in it you're pretty much just paying a three day early beta early access Look, is never what, worth it what three day early access should actually read is twitch streamer access yeah, yeah. pretty much 
Oh. Because that's all it's basically for. If you have a Twitch account and you play the latest games, you want that 3D early access, otherwise you're three days behind. Yeah. And it's a fucking single player game. You're not three days behind anything. Play the game at your own fucking pace. <laughs> Streamer culture is You are is if weird. your life is something like Twitch. Yeah. Streamers are as different. That's why it's really only for <laughs> they them. Rename it's that not to for normal uh, people. Gullible asshole edition. Hmm. Definitely. So that's that's for the gold edition. That's hundred and sixty dollars. So, so apparently there's three days, and that season pass is worth another sixty dollars. So it's ten bucks a day, and thirty bucks for the you know the other thing. Season pass. The season pass, mm. which also doesn't say how many pieces are in it. I don't like season passes. They annoy me. And then. There is the Ultimate Edition, which has everything as before, plus the Rogue Infiltrator Bundle, the Sabak Shark Bundle, the Digital Art Book, for $190. Fuck off. <sighs> that means they think each one of those skin packs is worth 10 bucks and a $10 Digital Art Book. Yeah. Like, I, God no. fuck damn. <coughs> like, we knew it was going to be bad. We knew it was going to suck. Yeah, but this is taking the piss, man. That's almost two hundred dollars Australian. Who is going to buy that for some skins? For three skin packs. Don't know how big the season pass contents are, how many there are, but when they're going to be delivered. They're track You're paying for um, Hopefully, you get something good. Hmm. A season pass and a digital art book. Yeah, See, and I'm sorry, digital art books are nothing now. No. Pretty much. Like they, I like art books. I have a bunch. I, I know that. you have a lot. I have a lot, yeah. But it's like big f books. They're great. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm not opening your PDF with pictures. Yeah, no, it's never gonna get printed out. It's never gonna get fucking looked at. Like, Physical or doesn't exist. Like, yeah. yeah, I I don't like digital art books. So as, as far as I'm concerned. That's got no value. The outfit packs have no value. I'm not going to pay it three days early. The only thing that has any actual value in there is potentially the season pass. Yeah. But I'm also not paying $90 for a season pass. No. I don't trust them. Hell, I'm not paying $60 for that season pass, even if I was just going to get the gold. Edition. Yeah. They're not really worth it, because half the time it takes them forever to get anything out. And... What the they problem also is they don't trust Ubisoft. Yeah, and what they do release is usually like, not I wouldn't even call it a fucking a DLC pack. It's usually a skin pack with maybe an extra room, mm. or content that should Sometimes. have been in the game anyway. Mm. Oh yeah, that's usually the bigger problem. That's the one I hate the most. Or it's like this should have been the ending of the first of the you know the game game. Why is this tagged on mm. afterwards? What is this shit? Yeah, it's not good. Hang on. Um, so I just decided to look up what the extra shit was. So oh, yeah. the season pass includes two upcoming story pack DLCs. Fuck off. Uh, featuring Jabba the Hutt by the look of it. Uh, cool. the, mm. the Kessel Runner bonus pack is a, a skin pack for your ship and your speeder to make it have almost a... Millennium Falcon aesthetic. Yep. Yeah, fair. Yeah. In the ultimate pack, so the Sabak Shark bundle gives you uh, a skin for your character to give you almost a, a Lando Calrissian look. Like sort of a the blue shirt with a little bit of a, a cape yeah. and blue pants. Um, a different look for your little critter. I think a little bit of headwear for your critter. Um, yeah. A blue speeder bike and an orange ship that gasp yeah it's just all skins it yeah. is it's literally all skins the rogue infiltrator bundle is the exact same thing with a different uh, color palette yeah, yeah. That, like that's just it's idiotic. not fucking worth it yeah no not even a little bit and two pieces of the DLC for let's face it that 3D early access has no value yeah so, to get that included, you're spending $60. For two pieces of content, I very much don't think Ubisoft has $30. I'm guaranteeing they would DLC not be expansions into other areas. It would just be the same rehashed environments. Um, I, I just seen in the season pass, there's extra bonuses that they didn't list otherwise. So, yes. in the season pass, 
you get one uh, exclusive day one Jabba the Hutt Gambit mission. So it'll be a okay. thing where you okay. run in, steal something from Jabba the Hutt and fuck off again. So that's them waving their streamer flag again? Okay. It'll, it'll be a side quest that isn't worth yeah. fucking five minutes of playtime for yeah. no reward. And the other, like the that pre-order bonus where it's you get a skin for your speeder and your ship, whereas the others mm. are a character skin, a critter yeah, yeah, skin, yeah. ship and speeder. It's mm. the other half of that. So you get the character skin to give you almost a Han Solo wannabe. Wow. Yeah. And a little satchel bag for your critter. So if you want to have the actual Kessel Run skin pack, you have to buy the game early enough to get the skin pack and get the season pass, otherwise you won't have the whole skin pack. Right. Yeah. They couldn't even sell you an entire skin. Right. Yeah. They had to split a single skin pack down the middle to try and make more money. Yeah. Fucking hell. And what like, the fuck for yourself? the pieces that people might actually want, because the ones for the vehicles just look like grey skin, like grey texture packs. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you got to move away from your ship most of the time. Yeah. So, well, assume, I assume you will, because it says it's open world. Yeah. I assume I'm not going to be around my ship that I, much, so what color it is isn't very look, important. It's a Ubisoft really does game, is... so I'm just expecting to run in the middle of nowhere to climb a tower to open up the next part of the map, so I can run to the next yeah. tower to open up the next part of the map. I know, right? For, oh, like, God, that gave me flashbacks. That's literally all it'll end up fucking being. Or it'll yeah. be a... Uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla of shit everywhere. Oh, God. I was excited for this game. <laughs> I, How did they fuck I was, us up? I was genuinely pricing? excited until I looked at what they've done with the pricing of it and what... Yeah. Then thinking about what Ubisoft does, because every okay. game... Yeah. Like, even that and latest think Avatar game, it looked... Oh pretty cool and if I ever found that in a humble bundle I'd be like okay that's cool I might actually have a look at it yeah it, I'll never pay for it I'll never pay full price for no. it anyway god no mm. yeah do we want to get on something we like we, that'll make us happy please I, like happy. I need something to walk away from this bullshit so <laughs> it's book week yay <laughs> it's book week yes <laughs> So, uh, last month we played... We, we played. played. <laughs> we well, played we books, play actually. It. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it played. Yeah, I was listening on Audible. So, we, we listened to Wayward, the first oh, book. Wayward Galaxy. Oh, Get yeah, it right. Wayward Galaxy, sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Jesus, Seth. How long have we been doing this for? <laughs> long enough to know that I usually skim articles because I'm trying to recall it for the show and I yeah wayward's the biggest word <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I really I'm not gonna it. take this shit <laughs> but I, I rather enjoyed this book it was pretty pretty fun me too very simple yeah. sci-fi there was nothing like overly you know world endy it was just a fun little romp uh, these Characters. were the start these were the types of books that sort of got me into audiobooks in the first place like yeah. sci-fi military like I mainly got into like yeah. spaceship combat when I first started mm. listening to them then I sort of branched into this when we first started listening to it I was like freaking hell this is really familiar and then I realised that I had already read this particular book on my Kindle <laughs> so it was like okay that's why this is really fucking familiar but now but you've yeah. got it like narrated by a really good by narrator RC Bray RC Bray yeah. is fucking awesome I would listen I to almost books. anything yeah Absolutely, but the this book itself very straightforward. So, what there's the I can't remember who actually made up the brew pack. The main enemy is the Russian. Russia and China is a primary, Russia, but China there's a lot of little subsidiary yeah, things off it. Yeah, like the Middle East were all lumped in. I think India was part of them as well. Well, uh, brew pack uh, is uh, Russia Pacific Alliance. Yeah, uh, so they were fighting the good old U.S. of A, who are running away mm. to a a different planet to start a colony. So, like, when they arrive, they are, what, two... Hot, 300 years 300 late. years late, yeah. Because uh, things happened. Shenanigans on board. Essentially, there was a guy who wanted to be a dick. And yeah. Ru Rupak infiltrated. like, I'm going to fuck up everything. Yeah. And then, despite, basically, he failed. But yeah. thought he hadn't. So he's like, he's done all the sabotage. 
and then put himself back in his pod to die. And and then he woke up. And then he woke <laughs> up. Was like, oh no. <laughs> when you like, because that happens right at the end. When I learned that, and looking back at that character, I'm like he was just shitting himself the entire time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, but yeah, so turns out the other colony ships had already arrived, you know, a few hundred years earlier, and it did not go well for them because these guys were meant to set shit up for them. Well, basically, the brew pack found them and just was like, ah, oh, yeah, we're not going to do yeah. that. And since then, a bunch of Rupak have been putting themselves in and out of cryo and just popping up every 60 years to see if shit's changed because they don't want to fight the US. And the US has turned into a tribal culture called the, um, the Ose. Yeah. Mm. Which is pretty uh, funny because, like, Ose, can you see? Like, yeah. It's yeah. just an interesting I, way of, I, like, I, okay, that. My favorite thing in dystopias is when people misinterpret. Yeah words yeah it's so good uh i really liked the osa they were pretty fun i I like the fact that english is now called brody yeah Uh, because there's only one guy who speaks english called brody and Uh, it's only because he's watched a fuckload of like 80s action movies (laughs) clint eastwood (laughs) oh i love that because it's uh he's the ai from the ship just put into a a very a very amazing suit of armor and he's just a bit janky so yeah well, His 300 run years and while. being belted around a lot. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And basically he turfed a bunch of his mission parameters internally to make room for more movies. So, yeah, yeah he was fun. Like, Brody was a highlight of that, that book. Oh, know, absolutely. Like, just the entire time, is someone transmitting? Still got it. This yeah. Is, <laughs> uh, fucking just throws out uh, one-liners when they're wildly inappropriate. Yeah. Uh, when he finds the infiltrator. <laughs> He's got him dead to rights with a shotgun at him, but he does the, remember what I told you I'd kill you last? <laughs> I lied. <laughs> but the guy he's saying it to has no context, does not know what's going on. Oh, I love it. Also, oh. the, the fun part is the fact that that guy uh, was also in the fir- the group that he first meets and claims they're all infiltrators and spies. He's like, <laughs> aha, he picked up on it. Well done, Brody. Well, the, the whole thing of like, they've just come down to the planet they've just realized that the, the AI from their ship is in a body and walking around and they're all talking about okay AI, our AI is in like a, a pretty attractive looking body and then they go to this yeah. colony and the first thing Brody says to us is that uh, I'll let you t- uh, bang my sister and they all just piss themselves laughing and he looks at him never touch my sister so then, <laughs> just looked at an AI gone he's just said we can have a crack and now it's like oh shit does he know oh fuck <laughs> Yeah. At this point, Brody doesn't know that the that AI is as it could be his sister. Yeah. It's yeah. just well, the the scientists made both. Yeah. yeah, it's just a a whole dynamic and layer to it. That's like this yeah. character has no idea what's going on. It has made an amazing joke that's broken all of these people. Yeah, and he doesn't know it. <laughs> the yeah. one time one of his jokes actually works. Ah, uh, I, I like the way they get him under control though. By just introducing him to his dad. Yeah. And for this, like, Dad! It's like, uh, the, <laughs> I love the, his interactions with people. Like, the book itself was fine. Like, I really enjoyed stuff. There were some interesting concepts, but Brody was much of a highlight. But the it entire really way through, needed that comic relief. It did, because the rest yeah. of the topics were weirdly deep. Because the um, main character, while he was in Cryo, the guy who made the AI and the generation ship is essentially just a mad scientist that was government funded. So while like Gene mods him in his sleep. Yeah, Gene mods him in his sleep. Like basically, he wakes up and he's like essentially a Spartan. He is just off-brand Spartan. Um, but it's just now the oh. creepier one is what they did to all the other crew. Oh yes, yeah. fuck. Where the, they the conditioning subtly condition them to think of him positively. Yeah. Supposedly, it's no different than their actual emotions, just slightly dialed up. Mm. Yeah. Like, they didn't make someone who didn't like him like him. But if you did think he was an okay guy, well, hey, man, man, that dude fucking rocks. I like that. But to the level, you would follow him into combat and take a bullet willingly. Yeah. You would unquestionably follow his orders. And he knows this. Like, the AI flat out tells him numerous times, but he doesn't realize that she actually means it. Yeah. 
Or, like, to the extent that she means yeah. it. And even, like, the mm. ones who... Like, one of the generals catches onto it. I love the way he catches it. Oh, yeah. Because he just starts walking around asking people what they think of him. Yeah. Because he... And, and then, not just never what heard do you think, it was like, why do you think that? What has happened yeah. to make you think that? Like, the one, I, I like the way he figures it out, because he offered him a battlefield promotion to to from a civilian to a, a commissioned officer. Yeah. And it, then he's like, wait a minute, I would never do that. I would give it to someone in my chain of command first. This guy would have to come in at the bottom if I was running this shit. Yeah. Why the fuck did I offer him such a... A high position. An offer. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's how he figures out something's wrong. Yeah. And then, yeah, he starts asking people, why do you think that? It's... <laughs> and it starts getting real deep. It does. It's really interesting. I quite like it. Um, the Rupak were odd. I, I liked how strange they were, though. I, well, they really... The problem was they had two different sets. Yeah. And it's probably the one thing I disliked. They didn't super clearly at the start of a lot of fights... Tell you which one they were dealing with. They started switching between had, like, oh, these were the regulars, which to me I assumed meant the um, the malnourished ones, the ones who had been living yeah. on the land, and then there was the you know special forces ones, which were like basically their Delta Force. Yeah, the yeah. black tactical suit guys. But I, I still constantly got confused. <laughs> like, who were they fighting? The good ones or the shit ones? Uh but no but it's not a big deal it's not a deal breaker right like you'll know who they're talking about by the end yeah. of the fight yeah. it just kind of feels like, like and this is pure meta knowledge like character wise it makes sense mm. but like I as a reader wanting to understand what's going on need a little context yeah. yeah but either way it's bad guys to mow down that's all it boils down to yeah this Pretty just good. cannon fodder or Brady food <laughs> yeah but oh, it's gotta get those points, man. Ooh, but yeah. it does touch a lot of those like weird concepts, which I really liked, because it's like basically these military guys going, "We can't trust ourselves around this guy now. What the fuck? Why do we want to keep pleasing this person and doing what he says?" Mm. Uh, and that's a side story to it. Essentially, it, it gets wrapped up eventually. But yeah, no, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll probably read the rest of them. What's really good though is it has it kind of actual conclusion to the book yeah yeah been reading a lot of books that are part of series lately mm. and the amount of time where it's like massive click cliffhanger yeah yeah i know most of this series is out so it would be fine but i still appreciate when they're like no, yeah there this you go. This, this, this does book. tie the book up like you, it is an ending you can go okay i can walk away now but there is yeah. another book yeah. like if you want yeah. to continue mm. the story i don't oh. there isn't a third but yeah like you can Which if I'm you okay want that with. little bit more that like okay, I've had a slice of pizza, I just want one more, you can. But yeah. you can also stop on I the first one. My, my point more is less that you need to tie it up so you can't make a sequel, and more like, have a satisfying ending, mm. and you can leave the door open for more. Yeah. Pretty much. Don't basically be like, and the bad guy got away! Yeah. Because yeah. then I, I, my ending is <laughs> gone. You didn't round out this book. Alright, that's why I really enjoyed um, a series that I've talked about before, the Jekalian series of books. Mm, yeah, because each one of those was a self-contained separate adventure. The only thing that linked them was one character who just turned up. And they were done surprisingly well for that. Because you always had a definitive end to that adventure. Next time, different adventure entirely. And that was great. I want more kind of series like that mind if you're gonna link them yeah. just like just give me something satisfying to chew on at the end of this book. yeah 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 something where you can put them no, up uh, and I think we all on. recommend hmm. we all recommend uh, Wayward Galaxy yeah. definitely check it out good book now this month it's John Doe's pick this one yeah, I've gone good. back with the, we're sticking with the, the sci-fi military um, it's good I like Ura. Uh, this one's uh, John Ringo uh, Live Free or Die it's part of the Troy Rising series um, I've had it in my wish list for a very long time I had it recommended when I first started listening to sci-fi audiobooks and yeah anyway I ripped through the blurb and we'll go from there uh, alright uh, first contact was friendly when aliens trun uh, trundled a gate to other worlds into our solar system uh, the world reacted with awe hope and fear but the first aliens to come through, the Glatton, uh, 
were peaceful traders and the world breathed a sigh of relief. Who controls the orbitals controls the world. Uh, when the Horvath came through, they announced their ownership by dropping rocks on three cities and, and gutting them. Since then, Ooh. we've held Terra as their own, per or they've held Terra as their own personal fiefdom. With their control of the orbitals, there's no way to win and Earth's governments have accepted the status quo. Uh, live free or die. Uh, to free the world from the, the grip of the Horvath is going to take an unlikely hero, a hero unwilling to back down to alien or human governments, unwilling to live in slavery, and with enough hubris, if not stature, to think that he can win. Fortunately, there's uh, Tyler Vernon and his bigger plans that are just getting rid of the then just getting rid of the Horvath. It's there's three books in the series, and yeah, it just sounds like more sci-fi. Not so much military sci-fi because I think the main character is a civvy. Mm. Just I think or engineer sci-fi, I think. Would That's be a fair. better description than that military sci-fi. Yeah, it looks fun. I I like the sound of this. I know yeah. I know there's a premise in this book from a blurb where I got recommended this book hmm. that I think is a really interesting concept. Fair, but I don't want to ruin it because I want you to read it and look and go like this is fucking weird. Okay, nice. <laughs> I I always like those kinds of finds. They're great. Yeah. <laughs> Something you're sending to us now or later? Uh, yeah, or well, I can tell you about it later if you want, but... All right, later, later. Later. I don't want to ruin it no. for anyone else that does decide to read this book along with us. If you do, yeah. comment on it, talk to us about it, join the Discord, find us on Facebook, anywhere. Come say hello. We're, we're book nerds. We'll, we'll Just plug in shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, yep, that's the one we're going to do this year. Uh, not this year, this month. God damn it. Month. <laughs> and book the book year, is not that long. It's only like Look, 17 and a half hours. We, we could do a thing of a series in a month. That'd be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's us about it. Out past an hour. So I think we'll wrap things up for today. Y'all have a good one. Later. See ya. <laughs>